I'm going to be speaking with you about learning management systems for mobile devices, iPad, and also smartphones and things like that. So, how uh, many of you are familiar with the term learning management system? Okay, so the idea is that we could deliver um, learning on an iPad, like you could download a specific app, specific lesson, specific course, specific assessment. So that's a little app which has content inside of it, and you download it, you can play with it, and that, that, that's that experience. I have many such apps downloaded for personal interest and business interest that have a lot of content. But the idea of a learning management system, broadly speaking, is that instead of looking at only one specific piece of content, uh, that could be a series of videos, it could be a single video, it could be a lesson or a tutorial, you could actually have an ongoing publication of content and the delivery of that to your students on an ongoing basis. So you could create a catalog or library of content. And the learning management system has evolved over the last many years uh, in terms of being able to leverage a lot of the latest technologies and a lot of different realities of learning. So the most recent kinds of learning management systems allow you to create and define a class. People can enroll in a class so you can see the list of classes schedules. They could also allow you to launch little t tutorials or online courses. Uh, they allow you to launch assessments, which is a series of quizzes and tests. Um, so what we are really talking about is taking that idea into a mobile device. So we could actually have these kinds of content, which would be videos, could even be documents. And if you want to support uh, documents and document sharing as part of your class, you can do that through a learning management system. And uh, they allow you to search for information. So you could actually search you know, uh, for different documents or courses and assessments and launches and stuff like that. The other major part of a learning management system is that whatever the activities a learner is doing or the student is doing, you want to track. The tracking of that activity becomes extremely important for learning and uh, both the delivery and uh, guidance and feedback, that loop can be established in the learning process. Over a period of time, if you are providing them an assessment, they you know, provide the responses, you can see what they've done. And then based on that, maybe you have a next assignment or next assessment or the next lesson and so on and so forth. So that tracking can also feed into the reporting process. So learning management system allows you to see the reports on all the learning activities across all the students, across all the courses, assessments, documents, videos. So you can see how many people have completed an assignment, how many people are still missed, somebody may have missed their target dates and things like that. So again, we talked about delivery of, of, first of all, creating a library of content, being able to deliver different modality of learning different content. Right? The next thing is the idea of being able to assign specific learning activities to specific students. The ability to group students, so this is group A, this is group B, this is group C, right? And then assigning things to either all the individuals or specific students. And then the tracking of all the learning activities, being able to report on all those things. So that's really the, you know, a summarization of some of the key things that a learning management system does. Now we can get more sophisticated with this, and that's really where we are headed with the technology of learning management systems. So for instance, we can uh, personalize the learning experience. So if you complete assessment number one, the learning management system can automatically you know, assign you the next lesson and so on. So that, that would be the next level of sophistication. The reports are getting more and more sophisticated, so we can see a visual graph of all the learning activities over a period of time and stuff like that. Uh, so that's really all summary of uh, the uh, learning management system. Another key idea that I think you would see in learning management systems of today's modern generation, um, this generation of learning management system have a very good notification system. So they are email notification that once I assign you something, you get notified via email. And with mobile devices, we can do a push notification. The mobile device can tell you that there's a new assignment waiting for you. So the notification aspect 
could be very powerfully leveraged in the learning process. Um, there could be a reminder for you, okay, there's an upcoming class coming up two days from now. There's an assignment coming up, please complete that assignment. Or if you missed some assignment, they could remind you or, you know, remind the teacher that there's something that was not answered and stuff like that. So, what I'm going to share with you, the work that I've been doing uh, at Instancy, and I've been involved in designing and creating uh, learning management systems for the last 20 years. And also I've been involved with advising the Department of Defense on the initiative project called the Advanced Distributed Learning Initiative 96-97. And that led to creation of e-learning standards which are critical in terms of being able to grow this whole idea of learning through technology. If we create content courses or assessments or digital learning uh, you know, programs like simulations and things like that, there needs to be a way to interoperate that content and play that content across different learning management systems. Because otherwise, you know, you're going to have uh, no, no way to uh, reuse or share the content across different organizations, different, different school systems, and so on. So there, this emergence of e-learning standards is very, very critical, and that has been happening, you know, as a backdrop across uh, the academic sector, the corporate sector, the government sector. And uh, in the late 90s, there was a creation of a standard called SCORM, S-C-O-R-I, uh, which allows you to create course packages in such a way so that I can pull them out of one learning management system, put them on another LMS, and another LMS, so you can kind of move them around. And that has created an ecology of, you know, a lot of vendors will offer you courses, off-the-shelf courses, right? So that's been a big evolution over the last decade or so. There's a new uh, e-learning standards that's emerging right now, again, created by the Advanced Distributed Learning Initiative, uh, which is funded by uh, you know, the Department of Defense, the White House, many other government initiatives. So that, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about that. It's, it's, uh, it's not a very complex thing to explain, but I'm going to, at least in the last part of the presentation, touch on that. The new standard is called the experience. Maybe I'll define it a little bit, and then just to broaden your thought process on that. Uh, so my first goal here is to share with you a mobile learning management system, which could you know, run on an iPad or a smartphone. And what are the key dimensions of that? I'm going to talk about the learner, the student perspective, uh, the teacher or the author perspective who's going to create and deliver the content, the administrator, which could be the teacher or the school administrator. And, uh, and also I'm going to talk a little bit about the offline learning. So from a learner standpoint, you know, this experience is both, like I said, uh, you know, tablets and smartphones, so it's a responsive design. It can scale up to the device dimension. So if you're landscape versus portrait, it'll scale up accordingly. We are using uh, HTML5 technology to create that. You can have a login. The student can use their Facebook account, LinkedIn account, to be able to log into the system. Or they can create a totally new account. Um, so think of this as a class. A class might run over a period of time. It could be six months, one year, whatever the case might be. During that class, there might be many learning resources, I use that term broadly, which could be videos, lectures, um, <coughs> interactive multimedia tutorials, assessments, documents, and so on. So you can actually publish them into the catalog that you see here. So there is a menu of the, of the app, which can you know, expose all the library of content that the student has access to. So you could actually, uh, this, uh, app framework is configurable. There are some situations where you don't want to show the student the catalog of things to pick and choose from. You directly assign certain specific uh, learning resources to that student. So this is configurable. You can choose to hide the catalog and directly assign things to the student. Or in this case, in the default environment, there is a catalog. Uh, so the student can browse through the catalog, find uh, there's a description and uh, each of these items are tagged with keywords, short description, long description, and the teacher's name and stuff like that. So you can search things easily. Now in some cases, it may not be relevant here. You know, 
students could buy a, a course. You know, if, if that was required, some of our um, people I work with, they sell training in online educational resources, and that comes in handy. Um, so from the catalog, I could actually then create a playlist. A student can have a list of items that they are learning, so it could be, let's say, two or three tutorials and assessment. So that's part of their playlist. So from here, I can launch each one of those individual programs. Now, the typical, or most of these learning management system, systems allow you to build a library of content and put that on the server. So that anytime the student is accessing the learning management system, they log in, they're able to see their profile, they're able to connect to the server and see all the assigned lessons. So that way, you can have a ubiquitous access to all your content materials at all times. And if you change things, if you add things to the catalog, or if you make assignments to the students, that information becomes dynamically available. All they have to do is log in, just like they log into Facebook. So Facebook is also doing the same thing. I mean, all your interactions and videos and uh, photo sharing is happening on the server. You log into the Facebook, you can see all that. It's much the same way the learning management system is a application or a server application designing on an internet server somewhere. The user can create a profile, the student can have their picture loaded up, they can have their um, contact information and email account, and also they can um, see their progress, what they've completed, and, and so on and so forth. So the mobile app can be configured with different graphics and the logo and stuff like that, so each institution can brand it the way they want to present their app to the students. So there's a lot of options there, and I'll share with you. You can set that up from the learning management system. So the idea is this app creation is something that is simplified using a learning management system, a mobile learning management system, I should qualify, because otherwise app creation is a very expensive and a time consuming process. You know, if we have to from scratch, create a new app. It's a cumbersome process, but what this is doing is actually allowing you from the from the learning management system and administrative interface to be able to configure the look and feel of the app that the school is going to see. And that begins to publish the content through the catalog. Um, so this is another, another example of the app configuration and you can choose colors and uh, the themes or anything else. Another example. Now, another thing that uh, we have here is the notion of the learning tribe. So let's say you want to create a series of lessons, not just a single lesson, series of lessons and an assessment at the end, a post-assessment, if you will. You can create a learning tribe. So a learning management system in this case allows you to create uh, a grouping of lessons in the notion of the learning tribe, and you can publish that to the catalog. And when you assign that learning track to the student, they get all the uh, lessons and tutorials as packaged or bundled inside the learning track. Now we actually can click and launch a particular learning module within a track or a standalone learning module. This learning module could have multimedia elements like graphics and animations. So this is an example of what the learning module might look like once I've launched it from the LMS. So you have uh, a navigation page. Uh, you know, with the menu, you can you know, go back and forth with this navigational buttons here. Closed caption could also provide audio narration. Uh, you have assessments and quizzes inside of the module and then some other multimedia assets. So you can create a sequence of uh, pages as part of your learning module. So here's where the tracking comes in that I spoke about earlier. The student launched this learning module. I want to track that. I want to know that they did or not. They clicked on page number one. They answered this question and they answered C on that question. I want to track that. So all of those things and activities that student is doing on this are trackable. That's the power of the learning manager system. So instead of just you know publishing something on a website, uh, I don't know if somebody actually did anything or not. Here, when the student logs in, I have a unique uh, identifier 
their profile in the learning management system and I'm tracking everything from beginning to the end. As long as the student is on the LMS, logging in today and coming back tomorrow, coming back a month later, I have all their progress history in the LMS database. That's why you know these systems have become part and parcel of uh, you know education system. Assessment. So this is another construct within the LMS where uh, I will present a series of questions. Now here we can get sophisticated. The LMS will allow you to randomize the questions. So if I have 50 questions, I randomly want to select and present 20 questions to the student. Uh, I want to share different kinds of questions and formats multiple choice question, or fill in the blank question, or drag and drop question. So there are different types of activities that the LMS allows you to learn. Okay. Uh, or you can also create surveys. So a survey is more of a feedback form. So you can actually do that as part of the learning process. So you can ask them to submit some information uh, or an assignment, and that could be done as a, as a survey with different kinds of questions. And some of these questions would be uh, type in responses where they have to type in a long response, stuff like that. And again, everything that the student does, the LMS tracks, and you can get a report on how many students answered the survey and what their responses were. For assessment, we could give student a report or a, or a summary at the end of the assessment. How well did you do? Question by question analysis. What did you get right? What did you get wrong? So that's immediate feedback to the student. Now here's something more sophisticated where we can actually have students take an assessment and we can recommend what other lessons and tutorials would be useful to them. So that gets a little bit more sophisticated. Any questions so far? We've talked about building different kinds of, of, of content and delivering it through the others. Any, anything jogs your mind in terms of, or any questions that come upon you might be able to use it or, you know, things of that nature. Well, moving along, we have uh, the ability to create uh, upload documents, so common formats like Microsoft Office, Word, PowerPoint, uh, PDF files, we can upload those and make them part of the learning process. Videos, very popular, the teachers being able to upload videos and share them through the learning management system. When I talk about events, Events are scheduled learning activities, whether it's a class event or a field activity, you can schedule that so the learning management system can present a calendar of all these events, a list of activities and students can sign up for that. So you can try to sign up for one. Then another, um, another learning activity within this learning management system is discussion forum. So that's more of a social interaction where you can create a topic as part of a class a series of topics, the school can post their comments and questions and share information on each other. So that can be presented in a mobile form packet as well that you see here. And then we talk about the push notifications. So now the idea here is that I don't necessarily as a student need to log into the LMS to find out any assignment or any events or any you know, uh, activities that I need to respond to. The push notification can be used to inform the student even if the app is turned off. So I don't have to launch the app to see what's happening. It's kind of like uh, Twitter. I mean, I can get a Twitter feed. I don't have to open it to see what's happening. I mean, it just uh, shows an icon on the, on the uh, mobile device. You click on it, it tells you that there's a new learning assignment waiting for you and stuff like that. So we can leverage push notifications both on, this will work on Android as well as on the Apple devices. All right, so uh, again, some, some organizations are also using news feeds and stuff like that as part of the learning activities. Uh, another uh, aspect of modern LMS that I have designed is the ability to have uh, social learning within a class environment. So I can see who the other participants are. I can add them to my connections. I can send them messages. I can share a lesson or I can share an assessment. I can share a document within this LMS environment. I can search their profiles, that sort of thing. 
All right, so, so far we have really you know, gone through the learner experience uh, from a learning management system perspective. Now, you could imagine that each, if you are planning classes across the school, each class could be a similar experience to what we have seen. And there are, uh, you know, in the system there's a way for the student to go from one class and switch over to the next class. And that class may have its own calendar of events, its own repository of content, its own assignments, and so on. So there is a possibility for a student to actually belong to multiple courses, multiple classes, and so on. Now really, this is the power uh, of the LMS. And where the technology is evolved now is that the browser has become very, very capable, very powerful. You don't need to have necessarily desktop tools. Kind of like Google Documents, it allows you to create a document or a spreadsheet through a browser experience. So this is what we have here. Uh, an author is a teacher who wants to create um, content and share that through the LMS. So there's a browser-based login for that author account, the teacher can log into the system and they can actually begin to create the content. Uh, and there are folders organized, different kinds of content they can create. They can build a web page, a glossary, or, a, or an event, a you know, calendar event. They can upload uh, documents, they can create a learning module or a learning track. Remember that whole idea of packaging number of different modules together, a learning track. So they can create that. And within that, there's browser-based editors, uh, kind of similar to PowerPoint on the browser kind of idea. So here I can create a series of pages, add graphics, and add videos, and compile you know, my lesson in this way. So it's a visual, what you see is what you get kind of uh, authoring system. If I have um, Microsoft Word as a you know, very lesson already built, I can leverage that and add that to my uh, lesson. Similarly, to our point, if I want to leverage some of my slides into the lesson, I can do that as well. If I want to synchronize different multimedia elements on the page, there's a timeline tool which allows me to synchronize audio with graphics and video and other elements. I can create a glossary, so there's a glossary editor. Uh, and I can preview what this content is going to look like. Uh, and, uh, you can see the mobile view, the tablet view, and all that. And the content is automatically going to be formatted. You know, if it is a uh, smartphone, then it's going to automatically adjust the size of the images and format the page slightly differently. If it is for a tablet, it's going to format it slightly differently so that your job becomes easier to create these lessons and not have to worry about whether well, it's going to work for a desktop browser, it's going to work for a mobile device. This responsive design capability is built into the, the authoring tool within the LMS. If you want to create assessments, there's an assessment tool with which you can not only assemble a series of questions, but you can also set properties of the assessment. For example, the passing score. Or does the student have the opportunity or ability to take this assessment multiple times? Or do you want to time this assessment? Do you want to track how much time the student has to complete the assessment, and so on. So you can set those properties without having to worry about the program. That's all done behind the scenes for you. So in this assessment editor, you can add questions. Uh, again, uh, what you see, what you get kind of an environment. Add the questions, add the options. Add any media elements you want to add to the question pages. And then also create online surveys in a similar way. Now we come to the learning track. So once I have learning modules, documents, videos, I can compile learning tracks. A learning track is the ability to aggregate a number of things together into a larger course or a larger curriculum and then assign that to students. Here we have another interesting uh, thing where you could create what I describe as sequencing rules. What that means is that I want the student to complete module one to four, module two is opened up. So you can actually hide and not show all the modules. Or you could pre-assess the student, so you could start with a pretest, and based on how they responded to the questions, you can open up the next series of lessons within the track. So this is the more sophistication uh, or a personalization aspect of the learning track. 
So you can add those rules in this uh, editor all through the browser and publish your uh, content. You have a web page editor, so if you want to publish some web pages on your global site or your global portal, you can do that. And then the event editor. So if you want to schedule any learning activity, you can create the calendar of events. There's a built in calendar and a built in uh, event editor. You can import documents and other media elements like video and stuff like that. And um, now you can, you can see that when you publish the content, this template is something that can be totally branded. I mean, you can have the institution's logo and colors, and you can publish and see what your content is going to look like. The template inherently has a responsive design. It could be for a larger screen or a smaller screen. It will adjust. The template size will also adjust to the size of the, of the device. That's really possible through the HTML5 technology, which is now ubiquitous all across all the major browsers. And the templates could look really different. I mean, you need and you look at the design of it, it looks like a totally different style of presentation. So you publish your content and build a library of content and if you have multiple teachers in an institution, they could share content through this repository. They could share videos, they could share images. So that's again the power of being able to do things through a repository shared by a number of individuals uh, you know, in a collaborative kind of way, authoring and content management environment as well. So uh, now we move on to another key aspect of uh, the LMS, which is the administrative view. Now the teacher could have both the author view and the administrative view, so that's certainly possible. It's just a role in the system. So from an administrative standpoint, as I mentioned to you earlier, if you are running multiple classes in your school, for example, each class could have its own mobile portal. So you can have class A, class B. Each class has, class has its own catalog of learning resources. And the student can actually have the ability to go from one, one portal to the other. You can remember I talked about being able to define your own app. Well, there's an app, you know, wizard that allows you to simply put your logo and colors and the menus and design it for a visual tool. So you don't have to do any Apple programming or Android programming. And this app will work on both Apple and Android environment without making any change you know, to the programming of it. So you just simply put in your uh, app configuration and start you know, adding more and more content into it. You can, this is your, uh, the administrative view of the catalog that the student sees. We saw the student view earlier. This is the, uh, the administrative view. They can add more content. They can add categories to the content. They can add keywords to each other content item. And they can, you know, um, see what the student's going to see in their catalog. All right. Once the catalog is created, you can switch over to uh, your dashboard as an administrator to see what kind of learning activities are you getting in your in your class, how many people are logging into the system, what is the you know, completion rate across all the lessons that you have assigned. So now you have a bird's eye view and a dashboard to see what kind of learning is happening across all the students. You can see a list of all your students in the class. You can make assignments to the entire class or specific students. So that, that's all what I describe as a user management aspect of the LMS. Okay. Uh, and then you can get into the report. So you can get a click on any student and get a report on that particular individual. And then you can pick and choose what fields you want to show in the report. And then there's all the data that you could ever ask for. You know, I want to look at all the lessons the students completed, all the assessments. You can click down to the assessment and see question by question how they responded. And all the data is right there. And no programming needed for you to do any of that. It's all there within the power of the address of the So the idea here is that you could public, you could design your app with the logos and the colors and all of that. You could configure the, the catalog page and the, the, the assignment page and all of that. 
and you can publish content and upload content into that and build a catalog and, and then begin to share that with the students. No programming needed. To create content, no programming needed. Create assessments, no programming needed. And when you publish that content, deliver it to the students, they access it, and you begin to get all the reports instantaneously, no programming needed. So it really allows you to you know, not worry about the technology aspect of things, but begin to look at more the, the learning, learning experience, the content you want to plan, the instructional design, the lesson plan, the, the syllabus, the assessment, the quiz questions. So that's really the focus that the teacher should have, and this environment allows you to do that. Now we come to uh, another aspect of this uh, mobile app framework. It allows you to um, download the lessons and the videos and the documents from the server, which is on the, you know, the LMS server sitting there. The student can download that content on their device, and that enables them to access all that content even when there's no internet access. So if they're sitting in a school bus, you know, they're going to play, they're going to vacation, or some other parts, wherever they happen to be, they can, um, even if they don't have internet access, or, or maybe their internet access is not high speed, but they want to access some videos or some other content, they can do that through the local uh, repository of the device. Um, and what, what you can do is actually publish your app uh, with your institution's logo, and so they can download the app, from the App Store, and they can begin to see all their content and begin to download that if you enable that. So from the LMS, you can enable allow download or not allow download. Okay. And if, if you allow download, they can begin to download it. Um, for all the content that they access locally on the device, there's tracking going on. So the students completed the lesson, answered the questions. All that tracking is now done at the local device level because I'm not connected to the server. So the beauty is that when the internet connection does become available, all the data is reported back to the server so that we can you know, not lose track of all the reporting data that still becomes available to the reports I shared with you earlier. Yes, the report tracks the time spent on each of the, uh, the lessons and learning activities. Now that could be aggregated into a report that says this student 
The data is there. Yeah, the data is there, and uh, we can certainly aggregate that. And uh, yeah, that, 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 that's very helpful. You can even see you know, which learner is participating more. There's a dashboard where we show the, uh, the, the highlight the students we have who are more active. And you can see who are the top students who are more active in the system and stuff like that. Uh, we have been uh, talking to some folks and institutions about this notion of gamification in the learning management system. So what that really means is that once a student begins to complete certain learning activities, we can kind of assign a badge, which could be a little icon or some visual that can show up on the LMS screen for them. So they begin to feel a little motivation that I want to get to the next point, the next level, and I want to get that badge and I want to get that you know, recognition and stuff like that. So this kind of elements are beginning to be added now, and we, are, we have designed those also. So the, the upcoming releases, by early next year, we will begin to see that, that sort of functionality be added to the LMS. So essentially, an LMS becomes a, a single uh, portal, if you will, uh, for all the learning activities across different classes, uh, all the digital content assets, all the calendar of events, and also uh, discussion forums and social learning activities, the ability to download content and, and, and really help you organize uh, the whole educational process and personalization of learning for every student. How much time do we have? We have about 20 minutes. I mean, 20 minutes. We have 20 minutes. Okay, so what I'd like to do now is to talk about what we discussed in our session is uh, the notion of uh, the experience API. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a little bit of a technical thing to think, but at the same time, from a learning process, you know, I think you really would appreciate that how useful this technology could be. Uh, and you can begin to think about that uh, when, you know, and when you work with the technology people, you can begin to have a conversation with them how this could help you in your learning environment. All right, so we talked about the learning management system being able to deliver all sorts of learning activities. Uh, we also talked about how that content can be delivered both on the desktop browser as well as on a mobile app kind of a configuration. So both these from, from a common learning management framework. Here comes Experience API. Um, Experience API is kind of like uh, a messaging framework similar to the activity stream that you see in Facebook and some of these other applications. Uh, I could get a, uh, information about student activity. Student launched lesson number five. Now we can also put the name of the student. Joe launched lesson number five. Time, such and such, date, such and such. Samantha finished assessment, you know, such and such, on such and such date. So I'm actually creating an activity stream and everything that the LMS is delivering can have a little activity stream that goes into what the, uh, the advanced distributed learning project, which touches pretty much learning across many, many different sectors, academia, government sector, corporate sector. So they're defining this experience API with the hope that as more and more learning management systems come around, they can embed this experience API into their application so that we can begin to track everything the user is doing into what is being described as a learning record store. So a learning record store becomes a nice, powerful database which will, which will track everything that the student is doing. You know, when they come into the system, we log it, a student came to the learning management system, and we put that list in the system. They launched lessons, they launch assessments, they launch web pages, they saw a document, they saw a video, they answered the question, they answered C on question number such and such. So all of these little activities, you know, can be put into this big database. And that database can then be used for processing and reporting and searching and doing all kinds of interesting things. So that's really what I see a brave new world of an LMS. Now, some of these things have already been tracked in the LMS already. But the, the, 
what we're really talking about is to open that up in a much more, uh, I could say, interoperable way so that one system can talk to another system, one system can send this experience API data to another system. So that's where it really opens the door for a lot of innovation in the coming years. And I think as more and more uh, tra uh, training and learning management systems begin to adopt experience API, you'll see all kinds of innovation. For example, uh, student transcripts. So right now there's no standard. You know, if I want to go from one, one school to another school, well, there is no standard way to move that data around. But if there is a standard way where we are tracking and, and capturing all the student activity, I could actually export that data and, and move that data to another system, and that data could move with the student. So if they go from one institution to another, or they go even to a job, what have you. So this becomes a very, very powerful mechanism to begin that kind of a, you know, functionality, which people have talked about over the last you know, few years and all that, but it hasn't been really implemented in any kind of a significant way, and certainly not been implemented in an interoperable way, in a universal way. So now if systems say, when you deploy systems, you can say, hey, do you all support experience API? Yes, we do. Okay, well, that's good. That becomes an important criteria when you evaluate technology. Uh, so that's the high level concept of this. And then, like I said earlier, you know, we, we definitely want to see some tools to be able to mine, mine that data, data mining. The, the notion of being able to search that, that, that data and be able to you know, create some dashboards and reports. And even more significantly, being able to make this data actionable. So that means that I want to take some actions based on some things getting registered onto this server, onto this database, I can now put some triggers and say, okay, well, I need to fire a message to the student, I need to report this information to another system. So these kinds of things are now possible, much more meaningfully than before. So uh, what we are doing here is that when we create the course, create that assessment, create that web page, it will automatically, from this publishing tool that I shared with you earlier, it will put, put the experience API hook automatically into that. So you don't have to worry about, as a teacher or as an author, how am I going to begin to track the data or the student activity using experience API. I mean, it's a technical you know, uh, capability that can happen automatically through the authoring system. So that's the starting point. Whenever you create any, any kind of a learning content, it will have an experience API hook built into it. When you publish it into the catalog, and when the student launches that activity, clicks on it from the learning management portal, from their iPad or from their desktop browser, wherever they happen to be, it can begin to track their, you know, their activity and send it to the learning record store, which is a server application running right next to the LMS. So the LMS and the LRS kind of like, almost like, you know, working like this. So the LMS has all the list of all the content, all the courses, all the assessments, and the LMS is kind of beginning to build a warehouse of all the student activity stream in one big huge database. So I hope you can begin to kind of visualize how all of this would come together. All right, then you publish that content, you do the same kind of thing we talked about earlier, you produce the multimedia pages and all the content, and you add your questions, and, you know, um, and now, the thing that we, when we kind of created this innovation over the last um, eight or nine weeks, we had a project with the advanced dis distributed learning, uh, where what we're doing is, I, I talked about downloading the content on the mobile device. So we were the first ones to actually show that you could track the student pro progress using the Experience API on a mobile device, locally disconnected from the learning app store server. So that means that we're actually storing all the learning activity on the local device. Okay, and when uh, when the server does become available, I can launch the content locally from the device. Okay, and when the server becomes uh, uh, available, I can send the data over to server-side learning and store. So this idea of creating a local you know, miniature 
learning record store within the mobile app was something that was the innovation that we, we said is possible. We can do that. Because that gives you a lot of possibility, particularly with mobile learning, because the students are everywhere. They may or may not have internet connection all the time. We, we yet we want to store all their activities and all that. And we want to leverage this latest standard called Experience API. How do we do that? So we, we showcase that, you know, we, we, we could make that happen. So that was our project by Washington DC about two or three weeks ago, demonstrate that. So again, from a student standpoint, they can launch the assessment, all the lessons, all the videos, all the documents, and all of that. And they can get their summary and results page. Um, and then we synchronize the data to the learning record store on the server. Now, just as a FYI, you know, more like background information, the learning activities that are being reported to the server are, they look something like this. Uh, something like this. Yeah, it's just basically large number of data records. They look like predefined, experienced, such and such video. Aaron Silver's experience, such and such course name, and stuff like that. So it's basically recording everything that the learner is experiencing. That's why they call it the experience API. So the experience is more from the student perspective. Everything that they're doing, everything that they are clicking on, um, and you can imagine that the learning records will put like, pretty much anything you can imagine. Let's say I want them to uh, go to a simulation of uh, you know, uh, some kind of a uh, device or flight simulation, or it could be any kind of a lesson, or it could be a web page, or it could be a lesson, or it could be an assessment. All of those things are uh, digital assets into which we can embed these experience API statements and they could be sent to the learning record store. So it opens up a lot of possibilities and educators and learning uh, technologists are very excited about this being an open standard so that we can leverage that. In so that's, that's the story about the uh, experience API. Now, you know, teachers and administrators may not look at this raw data. They might look at it more from you know, the dashboard perspective that I talked about earlier. They may see it more in this format. And, and that's why we have spent a lot of energy in compiling reports uh, and integrating the learning record store with the learning management system to show all this kind of data. So that's more meaningful to teachers and educators. So I can now see, okay, well, click on a learning track. It has a list of five different modules. I can see how many students have completed that. And I can click on an assessment. I can click on a learning module, and I can see page by page where the student visited it, completed it, time spent, those kinds of things. I can get lots and lots of data reports. So um, that kind of. Uh, brings me to conclusion of this experience API. All right, how much time do we have? Five minutes? Just about you. Yeah. So I think I'd like to pause here and uh, open it up for any discussion, conversation, ideas, uh, suggestions, what you think the learning management system could do for you or what it could do for the learning, or learning organization or school or class. So any suggestions you may have because you know, we're constantly adding and innovating and structure are actually working with um, David uh, here at the Franklin Academy to look at how a learning management system could be designed for their their use. So, you know, I'm talking to educators all the time. So love to hear your comments and suggestions. Yes. Is there a parent portal that also can access people? Yes, a very good question. And absolutely, yes, yes, absolutely. So uh, that's a very good question, so thanks for asking that. So we go back to um, So think of a pair port port I call it master portal. Within that, there's class one, class two, class three. Each class has a assigned set of students and teachers. And uh, 
You can add more points under there. And also, there are additional points that you can keep adding. Um, and I mean, you could actually conduct the learning directly on this also. But I, I suggested this idea of a class point because this gives you an opportunity to create a series of content elements or the catalog ongoing for within that class. And then you have a group of students and if you, you, you want to see a list of all the participants of the class, it becomes much easier to see that. So you have discussion forums, catalog, uh, participant list, and interactions between the participants. Um, of course, the reporting and tracking, uh, learning assignments, so all of that can happen within the notion of that portal. And yes, this, the system is organized in such a way that students actually can go out to multiple of such portals and just simply as a list of the portals and they can switch between one and the other. And this is what that looks like. Um, so you see, this is a view where I am a student and I, I have uh, music theater as one class and KP psychology as another class. So in this dashboard, I can see all the classes that I am participating in, and it highlights some of the key activities or key assignments or key discussions for each portal. So if I click on this portal, say so go to class, it'll actually show, show me the full view of that portal. So it can show me an aggregated dashboard. I'm going to log into the system so I can see all my classes. And I can click on any one particular class, and then I see all the catalog of learning resources and everything under that. So that was a very good question. Other suggestions and thoughts? Question actually, the XAPI, I mean, pulling in an assessment out of that, you know, both you know, to track everything that's coming through. So if I'm doing an assessment, am I also, is the bulk XAPI to be able to take then that assessment and bulk and feed it right into it? Uh, SIS, mm -hmm. you know, yes. so that I can, yep. so that those grades are just flowing. Absolutely. Out. Absolutely. Absolutely. Exactly right. Yep. I think there are all kinds of applications of experience API that will open up both in academia and in the corporate world as well. In the corporate world, they're interested in knowing what somebody's completed and then they want to feed that into a human resource system that becomes part of their transfer. Uh, it might feed into even, uh, you know, the uh, performance evaluation of that person and maybe their competition in the academic environment. I want to you know, move the student from you know, a school system to a college system, so I want the transcript to go in. And uh, of course, now the only thing with the experience in API is that the next set of questions are going to be what's relevant to you? I mean, there's so much data about the student. You may not care about everything, you know, you may be only interested in. Uh, one cross section of the data, so that's the next challenge that will come in, uh, which you know is pretty much is the case with any kind of uh, data application. I mean, if you go to Amazon and you start buying books, and Amazon is capturing everything that you do. When you go to Google, it starts capturing all the searches that you make and all the different you know things that you are uh, doing on YouTube and things like that. But if that data is there. Uh, what is relevant? That becomes the next question, and I think that. Uh, that's what learning technologies will be kind of faced with in the coming months and years, how to you know, meaningfully deploy and utilize that data. But the fact is the beginning, the beginning thing is let's get the data, and then we can ask smarter questions on how to use that data. All right, well, thank you very much for your time and presence, and I'm here for further questions. I have my contact information. Feel free to interact with me. You know, as we continue to evolve, and hopefully, come next time will be next set of innovations from the learning management and learning environment standpoint that I'll to share with you. But uh, look forward to interacting with you again. Thank you.